Uh, so, uh, Christos Kohli, as for more ends. Um, so, in, in terms of user requirements, I think also reliability is another important critical user requirement. Uh, whether you're talking about uh, DRBC or when I send an email, I want to make sure that it reaches the destination. Do you have any comments about that? So, so, I, so I think when I was mentioning av uh, availability, I was basically mentioning the underlying av availability, right? Yeah, but these are two different things in a way, right? Yes, so, so I don't think so. Availability can be built at in any one single layer. It needs to be built into multiple layers of the stack. Applications will be doing their own availability. And just like what you mentioned, they will be copying and syncing data in multiple places. Right? But you also got to make sure that the underlying infrastructure is a lot more reliable. Say, for example, if for every, uh, every bit of data you're keeping five copies, that is five times the cost. If for every one gig or 10 gig pipe, you are having a redundant 10 gig pipe, that is twice the cost. If your network gave you higher availability, maybe you don't need to do one is to one, you could do n is to one, right? So I think those, th those things do come into play. But, but yeah, I mean, I am not saying here that just by the network providing a high availability, application and services will not be doing that. They will have to do that. It has to be done at every single layer. I, as a vendor, I'm looking for an API, and I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, it's in a very early stages. Um, there are controllers available today, GA, and some are in beta. And uh, if you talk to them, they will tell you that they do have an API using which you can tap into the resources they provide. And uh, the interesting thing which is happening is that there seems to be some synergy going on between SDN and the OpenStack world. So if you look at OpenStack, mm -hmm. they have this uh, quantum API-based networking in which the idea is that the services will tap into a network as a service, and they will write to the API exposed by the quantum infrastructure, and underneath, all the vendors will come in and plug in their, their networks, and it won't matter what network is beneath the API. So you will see uh, a richer set of APIs coming out of the SDN ecosystem. Actually, just last week, we initiated a discussion in the ONF work group. Uh, there, is a work, there is a mailing list. It's not yet a work group. It's called Northbound APIs, and in which, uh, in which the, the, the effort has started to at least try to catalog and see what's available today and what would be available in the future, and when would be a right time for the industry to standardize those APIs. I think one concern is that uh, people don't want to uh, standardize very soon in, because it's an evolving sp space. Sometimes you don't know what is going to mm -hmm. happen and what's, what should be standardized. Uh, but definitely the intent, I think, is there. Uh, and uh, it, at least in the ONF, which is the standards body for open flow, the discussion has started. You can start and uh, so I, I don't think so there is any hard number. Uh, so basically the question was uh, OpenFlow talks about programming flows in the hardware. So what are we looking at in terms of the number of flows required to be programmed in the hardware if you are looking at Google scale services? So I don't think so there's any hard number here in terms of what is required. And obviously, I mean it's not like you really want to program every single flow. You pr probably will, be, will end up doing some kind of aggregation at, at various points, right? And you will not be programming every single five tuple or six tuple and say, this is how I'm going to do my traffic shaping. So basically, there will be some aggregation there. And, and e even if you look at OpenFlow, right, it's come a long way when you look at the different versions here, right, from OpenFlow 1.0 to what's going to come out in OpenFlow 3.0. So it's still, very, it's still evolving. But I, I think we are not at the point here where we are going to program, say, a billion flows, right? I mean, if I, if I just uh, talked about 2 billion users, 
and I'm assuming if each of them is connected, I'm going to program two billion flows, you'd probably want to provide some kind of aggregation somewhere. Yeah, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's true, but uh, even if you provide aggregation, uh, after that uh, aggregation for the kind of uh, number of flows, so, so I wouldn't necessarily think about these as flows. I would probably think about these as what are the number of containers I want to provide. So I have 2 billion users or 2.5 billion users trying to access my service. And what are the different containers I want to provide? Right? I, do, I probably will not have 2.5 billion containers. Right? Today, I mean, if, you look at, if I just look at the QoS classes, I have, say, eight. That's what most networking hardware gives me, right? With, with the STN and OpenFlow, I can perhaps say that, you know, I can support 1,000 containers now, which meet my needs for, say, these 2 billion users. And that, that most hardware supports today, even today, right? So uh, if I can add to that, if you look from the uh, network ar architecture and design perspective, you are looking at flows from, from two different angles. One is the total number of flows the system has to support, and that is a controller uh, kind of a scale, right? So for example, if your data center has, let's a million users, a million endpoints, and you have a domain of one controller handling your million end users, then the controller has to make sure that it can handle the million flows that will be created in the network system, right? Now, individual elements themselves, they don't have to each support 100 million each because not all flows will go through all the elements, right? So from an element perspective, I think the number of flows that you would want to support will, uh, you know, will increase with scale for sure. And it will really depend on how your network pattern is in terms of how much maximum each element should support. Now, from, from an industry perspective, what you will see is that uh, the, the number of flows being supported by individual devices will increase uh, as we move forward. So for example, today, uh, if you look at the history of OpenFlow, the first generation of devices which came as, uh, as prototypes or as proof of concepts to the market, they were mostly using TCAMs to provide you the flows. So every flow that you wanted to create uh, would go through individual elements, and that element would use the TCAM entry. And as we all know, TCAMs are very limited in numbers in a, in a given typical data center switch, simply because those are the most expensive component in a switch. Now, that's clearly not the way you want to move forward, because that's not going to work. So you have now products in the market today, for example, an IBM product, which actually uses an existing tables in the switch to create flows. So these are your tables existing in the switch that have been in use for traditional networking, and people are repurposing them to use for flows. So as a result of that, for example, uh, the IBM switch can support up to 97,000 layer two flows. So if you have a flow which can be satisfied by a layer two parameter, you can go up to 97,000, which is a pretty large number for today's needs, as an example, right? You can expect the same to happen with different tables in the switches. And of course, in the whole ONF uh, <coughs> process, we have vendors from this, uh, the switching silicon vendors who are participating. And the hope is that the newer generations of ASIC will be more optimized for open flow type of devices. So at an, at an element level, you will have enough number of flows that you can build your architecture of, of your open flow network that is, as an aggregate, you can support large number of flows. It's a <clears throat> two-part question. Is there a total addressable market that either I, uh, IBM or Google has looked at for SDN? And the second question is, um, as SDN becomes more prevalent, is this more being looked at by service providers or enterprise customers? So um, I can answer for the second part of it. So in terms of total market, I think what is interesting to see is that how customers are looking at OpenFlow and SDN. Many of them are looking at it for, for use cases, which I would say are new in terms of reflection of the workload that they want to support, mostly used to us traffic, virtualization of the workloads, and as a result, virtualization of the network itself. And that market is quite large. Actually, we have looked at that and did some math on that. And if you look at the what's today in the network, right? So in today's network, we think that for, for customers who are really 
having some you know, unique pain points of you know, configuration and scale, they might be looking at open flow as a way to simplify networks. So we have certain customers we have talked to who are looking to see how moving forward when they build their new networks, can they use open flow to simplify that, right? So that's, uh, that's kind of the addressing the market. And I'm sorry, what was the second part? Oh yeah, so um, we are seeing interest across across the whole spectrum. I mean, uh, you know, when I, I have talked to customers who are in enterprise financials, banks, uh, some of the uh, very large, um, I would say, you know, transportation customers and things like that. So the interest is very large. Within the data center, there is an interest because people are looking at it as an open standards way of doing networking. and. When they look at the flexibility it provides, it's uh, very interesting to them, so they want to explore that. Uh, service providers, I think those use cases we saw today, those are kind of well known. But the, but the interest we are seeing is really across the board. And I think the main reason for that is, you know, it's not really a, a prescription for networking, it is more about programming your network. So they look at it and they, f they look at the, the technology or its promise, and they, they look at what they are doing in their data centers for their applications, and they are, at least in all instances, they are able to find out something that they can do easier or something that they could not do before they can do with OpenFlow. Uh, most of them are starting with small scale, uh, I will say, POCs or deployments. They're testing the waters, uh, but they, they, are, they appreciate the promise of the technology and they want to pursue it. Yeah, I think from my perspective, I think I see a lot of uh, promise on the WAN side. I mean, for uh, looking at the growth in the number of users, the worldwide distribution, also the scarcity of WAN resources and the cost there. I mean, if the WAN can be a lot more accessible to a lot more people, it can really help the, the ecosystem of bringing things the, the way uh, it should be. All Anything right. else? I think uh, that's it then. Thank you all. Thanks a lot.